The Democrats, they fight against the borders. They fight to raise your taxes. They want to raise your taxes. They fight for all of the things that we don't stand for. That was President Trump when he went to Mike Pence's home state tonight with Mike Pence, of course, dutifully at his side. And it was 2017 all over again in Indiana tonight. And I mean early 2017, back when Donald Trump was bragging about his election victory and how he won Indiana, back when there was no special prosecutor, no Stormy Daniels, and no Michael Cohen scandals. How great is Coach Bobby Knight? How great. Oh, we love our coach. Remember he came in? He called me before I was running. I didn't know him. They said, Bobby Knight's in the phone. I said, what does he want with me? I never announced. I was thinking, but I guess he read. And he said, Mr. Trump, I hope you're going to run. And just like the good old days, the president told lies about building a wall on the southern border. San Diego wants the wall. And I said to my people, here's the bad news. If we give them the wall, we don't have an advocate. If we don't give them the wall, they're going to be putting a lot of pressure on Governor Moonbeam in California. <laughs> right? I said, let's build a wall for San Diego. So we're building them the wall. I shouldn't have done it. They're not building the wall. They're repairing the wall. Donald Trump constantly departed from his teleprompter text and improvised long sections of his speech. But he did not dare, dare mention the investigation swirling around him. And he did not dare use the words witch hunt the way he did just last week at the NRA convention. I would love to speak, but I have to find that we're going to be treated family fairly. Right now, it's a pure witch hunt. Why don't we have Republicans looking also? Why aren't we having Republican people doing what all these Democrats are doing? It is a very unfair thing. If I thought it was fair, I would override my lawyers. He was on his way to the NRA convention. Then joining us now, Jonathan Capehart, opinion writer for The Washington Post and MSNBC contributor, and Jason Johnson, politics editor at TheRoot.com and an MSNBC contributor. And Jonathan Capehart, remember Bobby Knight? Uh, how could I not? Uh, you can't, couldn't forget him tonight. No. I mean, it, it, it's the president's greatest hits. Yes, it was. I, I thought for sure I was sitting in the theater watching travesties again when they hit, a, there's a <laughs> gong and the scene resets itself and everyone's saying the same lines again. At Bobby Knight, the wall, did he tell the story about the frog and the scorpion yeah. for good measure? I mean, well, here's what he didn't talk about. Lion Comey, mm -hmm. special prosecutors, uh, a rigged uh, group of Democratic prosecutors trying to get him, witch hunt, absolutely none of that tonight. And what's interesting that you showed him on his way to the NRA convention where he talked all about it. At the convention, uh, at, at Joint Base Andrews, mm -hmm. before he even got on the plane, he talked about it some more. That was Friday. What happened in the interim? Rudy Giuliani went back on television right. on Sunday and made a bad situation, which he was trying to clear up on Friday, made it worse. And now we've heard nothing but crickets. And Jason, uh, Michael Avenatti comes out Tuesday, drops a nuclear bomb into the situation uh, with his revelations about Michael Cohen's use of that LLC and not a word tonight it, from Donald Trump about any of this. It is it is a miracle. I think Michael Avenatti might be the only person in this country to get Trump to shut up. It, it, it might be, it might, he might have that <laughs> and unique skill set. Yes, yeah, you know, I, uh, he has managed to get the president to not talk about all of his massive prosecutions for this one minute. But here's what's interesting. That's part of why it was such a throwback. That's the only thing Trump can go back to. He's got to go back to the election. He's got to go back to the fact that he wished he could have picked Bobby Knight as his VP instead of Mike <laughs> Pence because he was always much more passionate about him. And he's like, oh, yeah, I guess Mike Pence is here. But but that's part of what was interesting about the rally. It was the president. Is It's almost like he's always got to go back to this safe space, to this comfort zone that he's got of when he wasn't in trouble and when he didn't have to actually do his job. And Indiana's going to give him that opportunity. They might not give him the votes that he needs, but they gave him the opportunity. So here's how afraid Donald Trump is this week about what's going on in the investigation. He has not used the word rich witch hunt since 9.35 a.m. on Monday when he tweeted, 
Is this phony witch hunt going to go on even longer so it wrongfully impacts the midterm elections, which is what the Democrats always intended? Republicans better get tough and smart before it is too late. Uh, he's on his way, Jonathan, to setting a record for uh, days elapsed without saying, <laughs> saying witch hunt. Uh, this is Thursday night. That's Monday morning. Uh -huh. That's a long time. Hey, uh, hey, look, it's Donald Trump. So any day now he could come back to the... I mean, this is part of his greatest hits. But as you've pointed out, Michael Avenatti has, has given him the, a run for his money on this to the point where, as Jason just said, he's shut him up on this case. Remember, we all, all we talked about was he never mentioned the, the name Stormy Daniels, yes. and mm -hmm. that changed. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, has he ever said the name Michael Avenatti? Has he ever mentioned no, him? Has he ever tweeted him? Yeah, Julian, yeah. Has he yeah. ever yeah. Giuliani, right. other people right. have. But the, pres right. but the president hasn't. Yeah. And that, to me, I have long said that Michael Avenatti is beating President Trump at his own game in the court of a public yeah, and, opinion. And, and Jason, this is a president who has reached far below the Michael Avenatti level uh, <laughs> yeah. to attack critics. Yes. He's attacked people at ESPN. He's attacked yeah. local people. He's attacked everybody on the planet. Yeah. Look, there, there are three names that you never hear out of Trump's mouth. Michael Avenatti is one that's most recent. He never talked about Michelle Obama, right? right. And he was always very, very careful. He can talk about Nancy Pelosi, he can talk about those sorts of people, but he also never mentions, say, the names of soldiers and people who died. Like, he has these, mm -hmm. he has these sacred cows that he's not going to talk about because he knows that even among some of his base, that would seem too far. And here's the other thing, and I think this is, this is a talent and a skill that he has. Michael Avenatti is the good version of what people wanted Trump to be. He's mm -hmm. got that tough New York attitude. He's, he's got this sort of style mm -hmm. and that swagger, but he seems to be fighting on the side of justice. And that's one of the reasons Trump doesn't want to go head to head with a guy like that. Yeah. Uh, Smart. Jason, <laughs> Jason Johnson, Jonathan Capehart, we're going to come back to you in a moment. Stay with us.